What weapons are being used in Ukraine? Russia's invasion of Ukraine brought the world's eyes to the capabilities of modern warfare. With missiles, tanks, and exotic types of bombs, the landscape for soldiers appears to be more dangerous than ever. The weapons used by both Ukraine and Russia are impressive in their capabilities and equally terrifying in their destruction. However, the destructiveness of the conflict cannot be entirely attributed to new weapons, as some of the most deadly events thus far have been the product of older technology. The cluster bomb, for example, was widely used in World War II by the Germans. Sprengbomber Dickwandig 2 kg, or the German SD-2, was a cluster bomb developed to attack both military and civilian targets. Likewise, Russia has been accused of using cluster bombs extensively to target populated areas and destroy vehicles. To date, there have been over 689 civilian casualties from Russia's use of the cluster bomb. This is not to say that newer technology is not as destructive, far from it. Ukraine's use of the Buraktar TB2 drone to destroy command posts, military vehicles, and air defense systems is just one example of new technology inflicting large-scale destruction. These weapons, some old and some new, are examples of the most dangerous weapons available for use today. Cluster Bomb Although the cluster bomb is a generalized term with many variations, at its core, it's made up of a hollow shell with thousands of smaller bombs inside. In the Ukraine war, Russia has outfitted their cluster bombs with small parachutes to slow the bomblet's descent, which allows fighter pilots to carry out low-altitude attacks. The cluster bomb has been banned since 2010 under the Convention on Cluster Munitions. Following reports by the Cluster Munitions Coalition of Russia's use of the weapon, many countries have come out to condemn their actions. On March 2nd, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, who's the United States' ambassador to the United Nations, issued this statement, quote, We've seen videos of Russian forces moving exceptionally lethal weaponry into Ukraine, which has no place on the battlefield. That includes cluster munitions and vacuum bombs, which are banned under the Geneva Conventions, end quote. The cluster bomb's appearance in Ukraine is especially alarming because Russia is using it to target highly populated areas. This results in many civilian casualties and destruction to infrastructure in Ukraine. More disheartening still, a study by Handicap and Inclusion, which is a French charity dedicated to disaster relief, found that only up to 40% of the small bombs detonate on impact. This means after a cluster bomb is dropped, as many as 60% of the bomblets are dangerously scattered around the area, ready to explode at any time. Biraktar TB2 Drone The development of drone warfare has forever changed the landscape of war. No longer will pilots risk their lives in the cockpit of a fighter plane, dogfighting in the skies above the battlefield. Now, unmanned drones can be controlled by someone in an office building thousands of miles away. The Ukraine military has utilized this technology to devastating effect in their struggle against Russian forces. Twelve of the Beraktar TB2 drones were purchased by the Ukrainian military from Turkey in 2019, and now they're being put to the test. When the Russian military was massing in Crimea near Ukraine's border, it was the TB2 drone that carried out the first reconnaissance mission in an active conflict zone. Then, the drone was later used to destroy a Russian artillery position that was bombarding Ukrainian troops. With a blended wing body design and an inverted V-tail structure, the drone is capable of staying at a medium altitude for long durations. A variable-pitch two-blade propeller is mounted between the tail booms and produces enough thrust to propel the machine 224 kilometers an hour through the sky. More impressive than this, the drone can also be outfitted with four laser-guided bombs that are capable of carrying out devastating stealth attacks. SIG MCX Semi-Automatic Rifle Used by Ukrainian Special Forces, the SIG MCX Semi-Automatic Rifle was first released at the SHOT Show in 2015. This weapon is highly customizable and comes in many variations. However, from photos of the weapon in Ukraine, it appears that the 11.5-inch barrel and suppressor handguards version is being used. The taper of the barrel's profile allows both muzzle devices and sound suppressors to be directly threaded onto the weapon without the need for washers. This allows the weapon's barrel to be changed in just a few seconds to virtually any length and caliber. 
Regardless, all weapons of the SIG MCX series utilize a short-stroke gas piston system, which dramatically reduces recoil and improves the durability. There is a reason this weapon was chosen by the Ukrainian special forces to protect their country. It's so quiet with the suppressor that shot timers have to be placed at the ejection port to pick up any sound. In addition to this, the weapon is capable of firing 800 rounds a minute at targets over 500 meters away. The firepower of this rifle, in tandem with its virtually silent nature, makes it an incomprehensible problem for any opposition. The world is so used to battlefields being filled with a sonic landscape full of explosions and rapid gunfire, but now it appears the most dangerous new weapons will favor stealth. After all, even more frightening than the sound of a machine gun is to not be able to locate where 800 rounds a minute are coming from. N-Law Anti-Tank Weapon now synonymous with Ukraine's stubborn resistance to the Russian advance, these British anti-tank weapons are responsible for 30 to 40 percent of Russia's tank losses. To date, Russia has lost roughly 1,500 tanks in Ukraine and has been forced to drag out Soviet-era machines to keep the pressure on while advancing. The N-Law is the perfect light anti-tank weapon at a maximum weight of 28 pounds and with an effective range of between 20 to 600 meters. These weapons can be fired in close proximity to other people and buildings because of their soft launch system, which allows the missile to be fired at a reduced speed and without an explosion before rocketing off towards its target. After being launched, the missile uses magnetic sensors to set off a proximity fuse before contacting its target. What this means is that the missile will detonate some distance before making contact and cause much more damage. Proximity fuses are believed to be five to ten times more lethal than fuses that detonate upon impact. Further, this weapon is only thirty to forty thousand dollars in comparison to its counterpart, the Javelin, which is hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars. But if the great price and impressive specs are not a testament to the end law's effectiveness, then look no further than the smoldering ruins of Russian tanks alongside Ukrainian roadsides. T-90 Russian Tank the tank is an iconic sight on the battlefield, whether it's providing cover for advancing infantry or shelling enemy positions. The versatility of these machines cement their place in modern military operations. Russia counts the new T-90 tanks as among its best battle tanks and has relied on their presence to push into Ukraine. Only three crew members are needed to operate the 48-ton tank, which relies on its V92S diesel engine to get it moving at up to speeds of 60 kilometers an hour. Further, it comes equipped with a 2A46M 125mm smoothbore tank gun and a 12.7mm cord heavy machine gun. The T-90 tank, while impressive in its capabilities, is over 30 years old and very weak to anti-tank weapons. As such, Russia has had to develop ARENA, a modern defense system aimed at protecting the T-90 tanks from anti-tank missiles. ARENA has not yet made an appearance in the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, leaving us only to guess at how effective these tanks would be with their proper support systems. Instead, the T-90s have been outfitted with steel grills at the top of the turret in a desperate measure to fortify against the constant missile attacks. So far, there have been 31 confirmed T-90 tanks lost by Russia. Nevertheless, the speed and firing capabilities on these tanks makes them one of the war's most dangerous weapons. The war in Ukraine has cast a light on the capabilities of modern weapons as well as reminded everyone that cruder developments such as cluster bombs still command a place on the battlefield. It's a strange study to observe how new weapons are becoming lighter, quieter, and more precise while at the same time the battlefield is increasingly affecting non-combatants. Drones are capable of carrying out precise targeting missions, and yet cluster bombs are still being used to wreak havoc on populated areas. In looking at the most dangerous weapons of the Ukraine war, it becomes clear that, in some ways, we are all affected by this era's military technology, either being protected or destroyed by it.